everyone, Angela Wolf here, and we are cleaning the studio today. <laughs> oh my, this might take a few weeks, but I got to clean up. I got to get it organized. But in the meantime, I found some really cute fabric. So I thought it'd be fun to make one more skirt. I'll do it live with you over the next few weeks. It's going to be a touch of couture though. What is my favorite, favorite skirt? Favorite jacket, favorite skirt, kind of has a trend there. I'll let you guess for a minute, but today we're gonna cut out the fabric, lay it out. I'll give you some ideas if you wanna sew along and we'll do this over the next few weeks. So pop in, say hi, everyone. It's nice to see you. I was checking in with some of our dear friends in Florida. Susie said she's okay. I haven't heard back from a few others. So if you happen to be watching live today, our uh, prayers are with you all that you all stay safe. And then it's headed into the Georgia, North Carolina, where I have family there, we have other friends there. So hopefully it goes through and everybody's okay. So yes, I dyed my shirt. This is one of the t-shirts I bought. Susie, do you remember this? Janice, are you in here? So we, I bought a bunch of white t-shirts. They're rayon, super soft, super comfy, but I was not gonna walk around wearing a white t-shirt. That would not last for five minutes. So I threw it in the dye bath, added a few rubber bands, and this is what I got. It's pretty fun. A great shirt to clean in because it's rayon, meaning it's not very hot. <laughs> All right, so can you guess? You got it, Pam. I didn't even read it till it came up. You are high five to you. And I think everybody else got it as well. The Chanel inspired skirt and jacket. You can kind of, I kind of gave you a hint with the fabric behind me here. So I'm going, as I'm cleaning out everything, we got to get the basement organized to re-carpet. And uh, I'm finding a lot of fabric. Hmm. I don't know how that got down there, but a fabric that I forgot about. So this is one of the tweeds that we did a while ago. Do you all remember this? When we did the couture jacket? It's beautiful. It has uh, a little bit of a shine to it. Just a little. But the one thing I noticed is because of that sheen, I, mean, I can barely see through it. So I have to watch what lining I do. But it is a little scratchy to the skin. So of course I'm gonna line it. And I thought, what a better way to do it than quilt the lining, which I love to do. So that's what we're going to do. All right, let me take this down. If anybody has any comments or questions, keep them rolling in. It's so nice to see you all. And by the way, uh, if you're watching on uh, YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. If you're on Facebook, be sure to follow and share. Then you'll always be notified when I go live, especially if I change the times on you, because you never know what's happening this fall. <laughs> Lots of fun things. All right, so I have a question for you. And the best way for me to see it the fastest is to hit the like button, because I'll see how many. What color lining should I do? I'm thinking, well, I guess you, you can hit the like button just as for the lining. <laughs> I want to do a silk lining. So that's where you hit the like button. I think silk would feel so good, because if you feel this fabric, it's a very soft, it doesn't wrinkle, but that little sparkly, the black is a little sparkly and it will kind of rub on your skin. It's not wool, so I'm good with that. So silk lining, do I get a A plus on that? A couple likes. Oh, Esther says black silk. All right, what do you think, you guys? I'm going to bring a couple pieces of fabric over to make sure that we can, that I can't see through it because this is a little lighter weight, but this would be beautiful for fall. I'm thinking a little shorter skirt, uh, very similar to those ponty knit skirts I was making, same length, which is about, oh, maybe like an inch above my knee. So not like short, short. And then remember the couture jacket class that we did? I might have to open that back up in case there's some new people here that haven't taken that. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do a matching jacket. I'll drop it in the class as a part two in the class. Something like that. I haven't decided yet, but I know I'm doing the skirt and I think a single, like no buttons in the front, but having some beautiful embroidered trim in black and having a couple little pockets, I think it would be gorgeous. Oh, Patty says, I like gray silk. I have found some of that. I found some pink and I found some other fun prints. So is that your vote? I'll bring some to the table. And as I bring them over, then hit the like again if you like it. And then I can count how many because that pops up super fast. <laughs> I know. 
white silk with embroidery on the lining. Ooh, Phyllis, that would be gorgeous. I'm thinking I'm going to make this for the cruise too, Phyllis. By the way, cruise update. Uh, I don't. I was talking to the Fashion Sewing Club the last few weeks, but I haven't had time to jump on the live with all of you. So in case you missed the memo, uh, the website had an error. The price does include tips and gratuities. So taxes and gratuities. I knew there was a reason because she had, she had said that that's something that always people get surprised with the backside of the cruise. So it does include gratuities. I think Karen, she had emailed you on here, but if anybody else had that question, let me know. Because I would love for you to join us on the cruise. That'll be so much fun next February. Somewhere warm, right? All right, so I got a vote for here. I see a lot of pluses. I like this color. I'm not a good white. Like white doesn't look really good on me. I'm better with some color. But I think if I add enough black with the trim, I think I can pull it off. I could add a really fun top underneath, like maybe a red, a vibrant red or pink. Ooh, that would depend on the lining too. What do you think, red or pink? Probably red. Or I know, like Patty said, a real rich metallic silver with some black. That would be classy. Maybe on the bias, maybe, uh, I see some red and pinks rolling in though. Yeah, I don't know. I think red trim and lining. Oh, that would be good. You guys like the red. Red is always out. Oh, I, yeah, I think you guys are tied. I like both, so it's gonna have to be a flip of a coin. All right, so do you want me to show you some of the linings I found? Do you wanna vote on it? All right, so let me put this here and we're gonna start cutting this out today too. I wanna get this thing finished. Yeah, you know, while I'm cleaning. So let me bring Shirley up here. I actually have my muslin from last week. By the way, I tend to make a new muslin every season. It's not that I adjust size every season, but sometimes I want the waist a little higher. Sometimes I want the waist a little lower. And when you have a muslin sewn, you know it's going to fit perfectly, meaning you don't have to rip out any stitches, right? Uh, Patty wants to know, do I want to go flashy or subtle? Hmm, how about classy? Would that be right in between flashy and subtle? Super classy, where I could wear, I could dress it up with a pair of black high heel boots or dress it up in a different way with some black stilettos or make it a little more casual for like a lunch with like some boots that are flat, I'm thinking. Yeah. Oh, you guys are giving me a lot of good ideas. Yeah, Susan, it is. You know, the muslin, you want to know why? Because it also depends on the fabric. So I made this muslin here last week. You guys saw all the Ponte knit skirts that I made? Well, the Fashion Sewing Club did. They got an eyeful. Anyways, I made a muslin that fit perfect out of this cotton, but Ponte knit stretches a little bit. I ended up having to take a full inch out of each side seam. Well, when you're working with the knit, it's no big deal. But if I'm going to quilt my whole skirt together, that's a big deal. So I know that that's going to fit perfectly for a fabric that doesn't stretch. Okay, I'll bring you some fabrics. Are you going to show us about pattern matching? I sure am, Pam. That's the most important part. <laughs> it is. It is. All right. Hey, Bev, did you ever get my email? Because post it now, yes or no. And if you didn't, I forgot to double check if it was in my junk. And I hope you're feeling better, by the way. All right, so here's the fabric. Hold tight. I'll go get some lining. Uh, in the meantime, these are the two patterns I'm debating on. Well, not debating on. If you're trying to follow along, Fashion Sewing Club, we've been sewing skirts for the last month. So you should have a skirt muslin. But I want you to see this skirt. This is, this is the front. Yeah, this is the front. Look at how mine, I like mine lower in the front and then it goes higher and higher in the back. I can't stand for my waist to be straight across. It's uncomfortable. It bunches right here when I sit down, but this is literally what my skirt looks like. And then out in the hip a little bit and then straight down. So 
I started with this one. I did a pattern hack with this. You can see my skirt's not that full, so I turned it more into a pencil skirt. And this was the other skirt. This one's like, how long has this been around for? A while. I don't think I'm going to do the fringe on this because I want it just to be a simple skirt. But I'll keep that in mind because the fringe would look really cute on this. If it's a little shorter, uh, that would make it more kind of a summery holiday look. So one of those two is what I'm using. And then here's my skirt. All right, let me go get some lining for you. And you all can vote a little bit with me. So I have this whole section of silk charmeuse that I kind of hog for myself. Yeah, that meaning it's not on the website for sale because when I got it, everything was like three to six yards and I'm thinking this is gorgeous. And then COVID hit and the price of silk tripled. So I've kind of been a little bit of a hog on my fabric. So just the silks. What do you think of this one? Let me see, is this taped or? Let me open this up. Oh, it's just like a little plastic thing. Hold on. This one has every color of the rainbow, including black and white. I can't open it. It has a tie. Let me see. Here's another one. I guess, are they taped? Why would have I taped them? Maybe they came that way and I didn't realize it was taped. I would never put tape on silk charmeuse. I'm thinking it's just a plastic, like one of those, oh, it is like saran wrap type thing. So let me get this off of here. Thankfully, it's just in the side. All right, here's one. This is pretty crazy. I don't know, I think that this would be this would be better, I think, on a black Chanel style jacket, don't you? Because there's so much going on. Yeah, no, I don't like it. Um, but this would make a great lining and a really cool top. But I'm going to vote no. Yeah. All right. Too much? I agree. I agree. All right, let's see what this one is. Because this one has, it might not have enough white in it, but let's just take a look. Oh, yeah. I found a lot more, too, that you might like. The colorful one, I think, would look fantastic on a solid black, which I have a solid black tweed. I'm kind of... Have you noticed like some of the fashion trends for this year? The boot cut jeans. Oh, that's coming back out. Well, I still have that pattern. It's not in print anymore, but you can get the downloadable version. The boot cut jeans are coming back. I love that style. I'm definitely, that's definitely going to be on our fall list. All right, I can't open it. So you're just going to have to bear with me on this one. What do you think about this? Classy, too busy. All right, hold on. I gotta find some scissors around here. Anybody have any scissors around here? <laughs> okay. So this has the dots on each side and then it has the print in the middle. So you could mix it up a little bit and inside the jacket maybe have this down below and this up high or something like that. All right, I've got more. Hold tight. I'll be right back. Oh, I saw that, Helen. Actually, that white, I have that white fabric that she was wearing. Yeah. I would have to be adding some embroidery to that, though. I could never just leave it on its own. Okay, I have some solid colors. Those are kind of boring. Um, oh. There's some pinks. There's a lot of black, which black would be fine. Okay, I'm not sure what you'll think of this one but it's beautiful. All right, what about this one? This is gorgeous. This would make, oh my goodness. 
This would make a beautiful dress. Better, but not there yet, Pam says. Isn't the color beautiful? <laughs> Deborah says no. Peggy says no. Oh, okay, okay. I get it. I don't know. I like crazy linings, though. This one's better than the other two, I think. I don't know. I kind of like that black. All right, hold tight. Hold tight. Still too busy, everyone says. Well, I trust the Wolfpack because you guys have very classy taste. All right, I've got pink, solid pink. I must have a black and white somewhere. Don't make me take you down to the basement. Mm. Ooh. No. This one is, I remember buying this. I think I meant it for a black. A black tweed. This is more, I think this has too much brown in it. Yeah. If I had a brown tweed, it would be beautiful on the inside. But I would love to find something like, like, messy like this, like a messy, it's not really asymmetrical, but a messy print because this is so refined with the check. This I think would be gorgeous and it, it gets lighter and darker. But again, I don't really want to go with the browns. Okay. No go. Angie says it looks lovely. I agree, Charlotte. Too much. All right. Hold tight. I'll go get some more. I've got to find a lining, though, because I really can't start sewing the skirt until I find a lining that I like. So that could be a problem. Oh, wait, what's this one? I think I might have found one, unless it's see-through. Oh, it's see-through. It's sheer. But it would make a gorgeous blouse. All right, hold on. Everything I have has brown in it. Where the heck did I get all this brown? I don't even I don't even wear brown ever. Okay, I found the perfect blouse though. You want to see that? It's sheer. It's silk chiffon with cutouts so you can see through it. Would this make the most beautiful blouse in here? Oh, yeah. Oh, and I agree, you guys. That black, the black lining, I have to find a black silk lining with white. That way, it'll match perfectly, and I could wear whatever color blouse I want to. Would you agree? Yeah. This would be gorgeous. I love silk chiffon. So it has like a, can you see that closely? I mean, I can see through it. It has um, like satiny spots all over it yeah oh, okay i see hit the like if you like this one the best for the blouse and if that's this one's the best for the blouse then i'm going to have to um make sure i use a black lining or black and white oh yeah i definitely like this this would make a beautiful scarf too little see-through you could wear like a black tank with it Silver lining, Ann says, that would look good. Okay, I'm reading all of your comments as quick as I can. Uh, I can't use it as a lining, Michaela, because it's see-through. And you wouldn't want your lining to be see-through. Because look what happens. If I hold this up to the fabric, make sure I got the right side on the right side. You see what happens there? You can see through. I mean, I think you can see. <laughs> I can see it. Can you see it? When I hold this up on this bolt here with one layer, you can see it. And you don't want to see it because you have interfacing in your jacket and all of the things that you don't want people to see because it gives your jacket that structure. Make sense? Oh, I see a lot of the like buttons hitting. You like this for a blouse. All right, so that one was the fastest likes. So I'm going to go with, this would be a good blouse. 
Now find black for your lining, Peggy says. Gray or silver for the tank. Yeah, that would look good. All right, got it? Do you have a silver or gray mix for lining, Susie? Sober as in no champagne type of a look or what kind of sober on that one? <laughs> um, it would make a good blouse. Yeah. You know, it's fall. What do we do every fall? Wardrobe planning. <laughs> I know, Zena, you've been holding out on us. Fabric sale. <laughs> and these bolts aren't very heavy, so I can lift them. I know I have been holding out because I've been saving them for myself, which is terrible. <laughs> uh, some of the girls that were in my studio last year know I'm like, you can't touch that section. <laughs> you can't touch that. <laughs> All right. Um, let me look one more time and keep leaving your comments. I'll just set this up here for now because I think this so far is the winner for a blouse. And... Let me look a couple more places for a black and white silk. If you guys saw how much brown silk I have here, you would wonder where in the world did this come from? When is the last time you saw me wear a brown outfit? Ever? Maybe, <laughs> maybe once. Brown's a good color on me, but I don't usually, that's not my go-to. All right, I found a lot of knits. Silk, silk. Hmm. Let me see here. I found some velvet. Ooh, that would be good for the holidays. A lot of solid colors. I just don't see any black and white silk. Hmm. I've got black. So I have black. Ooh, this one is interesting. All right. I'm curious to see what you guys think of this. Oh, never mind. I thought it was black. It's not. Fabric sale just for the Wolfpack. Well, trust me, if I get rid of this, it would definitely, I would definitely uh, share it with you guys. I was thinking this, but it's navy. But this is gorgeous. Silk charmeuse. I love silk charmeuse. So I'm just curious uh, for all of you that sew jackets, you do, maybe you line them, maybe you don't. What's your favorite lining to use? I mean, do you like silk charmeuse? It's expensive. It actually uses more expensive than the jacket fabric usually. Well, sometimes, depending on where you shop. But, or do you prefer something like a rayon? Uh, Vogue Fabrics has ambiance. I use that all the time. I do like that. Uh, it's a little chilly against your skin in the winter. Or do you prefer uh, a cotton? Or do you just go for the good old polyester lining that you find at the store? Charmoose Ann says, oh, Wolfpack, I knew you had good taste. Silk for lining. Fember Gray on Patty is a good one, though. That's one of my favorites. Yeah, that's my second favorite. Well, my third favorite. I love uh, the, it's a China silk. It's really thin for summer. <laughs> what did you say, Patty? I'm happy to have some knit tops to match my jeans. No, I didn't say I was going anywhere. Well, I'm, I want to make it for the cruise. It sounds like there's a couple of really fun, fancy dinners. Um, and heck, who doesn't need like a cute outfit to wear out? I don't go anywhere though, really. I mean, on a fishing boat, I can't really wear it there. You're right, Patty. Uh, I should probably be working on shirts to match my jeans, but that wouldn't be any fun. <laughs> All right, let me go look one more time. Otherwise, I think we're going to have to go with the black. Let me see if I can. I'll lay this one here just to brighten up the camera a little bit. I do think, so a lot of you have my embroidery collections. I'm thinking the Touch of Couture had some gorgeous, that's what I designed it for was more of a Chanel-like trim on jackets. So I think I better start embroidering that. All right, I found a black suede silk. Hmm, I think that's gonna be the magic, unless you can see through. Um, I think that's it. Why do I know you girls are gonna come to my studio and you're gonna find the perfect piece after 
I cut. Well, I'm going to go down to the basement and look to double check, but I like Karina. Polyester for you because you're in Norway. Well, that's warmer too. I'm not going to use this one, but look at this. This would be gorgeous inside of a black jacket. It's a green. What does it look like on your computer screen? Green or teal? It's a real rich, rich green. Match my eyes. This would be beautiful. Kind of a fun paisley type style. So I have a feeling I'm going to be making a few because I'm going to have to put this inside of a black jacket. I'm just checking. Wynn has a meeting, and if he can't log in correctly, I have to put you on pause and help him. <laughs> All right. This is a suede silk. So suede silk is a little different than silk charmeuse. It feels suede, like a suede. It, that also makes a great lining, and I have quite a bit of it. So let me see if the two blacks match. I'll take you over here because I have to decide. I really like that other black for the blouse. All right, I'm going to make this a little brighter. So here's the black suede. And here's the black Oh, yeah, they're both the same tint. Now, do you all know what I'm doing here? Blacks, there's so many different uh, shades of black. There's like a deep black. There's a gray black. Uh, oh, give me some more number. Give me some more words for the blacks. There's light black. There's blue black. There's all these different. So if these didn't match, I wouldn't want them because I do want this for the blouse. Now you can really see inside there. I do have a lot of this fabric. I'll probably end up putting this in a sale for you guys. But it's beautiful. Lightweight. And then this would be the lining, which is the suede silk. Very soft against the skin. All right, so let's bring over the fabric and make sure that if I line it with black, that it doesn't uh, show through. So hold tight. Oh, you like it, Deborah? Good. Blue, black. Oh, Angie, that's a good idea. It's just plain. I know. You know you know me so well, Angie, that you know that I'm probably going to go crazy having just a plain black. So do I add white embroidery inside of it? Do I keep looking? I don't know. He had 15 different colors of black. Oh, my gosh, that's a lot. Yeah, we need a field trip. D, uh, the basement's a little scary right now because uh, I have to have it recarpeted after that crazy flood. But I think I'll probably have to take you guys down there. Uh, what's your suggestion for lining for a knit jacket? Hey, Connie, that's a good question. Probably um, how thick is the how thick how thick is the knit? Is it like a ponty knit? Uh, or what kind of knit? I know. I, th I need a black and white print. And I know I have one. I know I do. Somewhere. So I might have to, before I cut, just go check in some of my bins. Are you looking for lining for the blouse? No, Mary. I'm looking for lining for the jacket. Because I can't use that blouse fabric for lining because I can see through it. Make sense? Uh, Ponty knit, Connie. T to line that, I probably wouldn't line it. Why are you lining it? Just out of curiosity. If I, if you do, do you something really light that has a little stretch? Uh, Debbie, will the suede silk stick to your blouse? No, it won't. As long as you're using like a silk for the blouse or something like a knit, you'll be fine. 
<laughs> hey, Mary, uh, no problem. I need more coffee too this morning. <laughs> well, it's in the afternoon. All right, so let's go check and see if we can see through this. So if you want to sew along with me on this quilted skirt, your job is going to be to find your fabric and your lining before next week. Yeah, you can't see that black through there. That's what I always worry about. But I just know I have a white somewhere. Might be on Vogue Fabrics. I might be shopping at Vogue Fabrics this afternoon. I can't possibly shop. I have so much fabric here. There's got to be a black and white. I found a really good black and white knit. I'll show you. Looking one more time at the bottom. Those are all solids. I could dye a piece because I have some white and maybe add a little bit of black to it. Um, but I do want it to be black and white so I can wear different colored skirts. I mean, different colored um, blouses. Because I do have a couple tweed jackets that I did crazy lining. And then I'll want to wear a certain outfit with it and it doesn't match. But I did find the perfect fabric for a blouse. If I want to make it really casual with a knit, here you go. This is an Italian knit. Oh, why can't I find lining like this? Yeah, that's perfect. You agree? So I could have a blouse, dress it down with this beautiful knit. It has some black, it has some gray. All right, I got a. I'm going to have to go on a mission to find some lining that looks like this. And this is a knit. So I could use this knit for a lining very easily. Actually, that's the kind of knit, Connie, if you're going to line your jacket, that's the kind I would use. It's really lightweight. But if I use it as a lining, you know what that means. I can't quilt it. But I could use it technically. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, why do I know I'm going to get like 100 messages with these fabrics? You're going to go find me a beautiful black <laughs> and white silk charmeuse. Rogi, are you watching? Because I know you watch this show sometimes. She's my good friend at Vogue Fabrics. If you have any black and white, anything that looks like that over there, that's the knit for a lining, please let me know. Yeah, I thought that was pretty beautiful, too. Uh, nope, and it's not on the website. None of these are on the website. These are all, some are new fabrics that I have in, and some are old. But they're not. But you'll be the first to know if it is. <laughs> you guys think so? All right, so I think that's the vote. All right, so the next step is going to be, I will measure, so I have my skirt muslin. Now, this skirt... I can't remember. Did it include? I can't remember if I had a hem allowance on this or not. So I will go ahead and cut the tweed with you right now. But I won't cut the lining because I'm still going to go downstairs. Oh, Pam, thanks. Pam says she doesn't see any. I might be dying my own. Yeah, Marion, you're super lucky. You've got like one of the best stores right there. Okay, so let me take this down. I think I figured out why my studio gets so messy. You can hear me dropping bolts of fabric. So somebody's gonna have to pick that up. <laughs> okay, so let's see which one's the longest. Um. Hold on, I have something over here, a measuring tape, just to double check my measurements. So it looks like this would be the top. And I'm going to add a little bit on the top side and two inches on the bottom because I cannot remember 
I added a hem allowance or not. So we're going to go with 22 inches. And I can cut a full skirt from one end to the other because this fabric is like 60 inches wide or so. So let me make sure that everything's even. Do you ever get back from the fabric store and there's a pretty easy line to cover, to cut along here, <laughs> but you'll get back and it's like this. Oh gosh, now that makes me crazy, especially when it's an expensive fabric. All right, 22 inches, which will take me, okay, so now this is where I have to decide when I hem my skirt. Here, I think it'd be easier if you see this end. Pam, you were talking about lining things up. I line, I line up my hems. But do you want your hem? Well, if you're doing the fringe one, that's totally different. But at the bottom, do you want the white to be at the bottom or the black? Now, I've already made up my mind on this, but you guys tell me which one you want. Do you want just where it's the white at the bottom or the black trim? And I'll tell you which one I've chosen and why after I see your questions come through. I'll go ahead and cut my 22 inches while you're answering. I've been sewing bags all day, if you can believe that, because I'm doing a really fun sew along with you on Brothers page starting next week. I think you're gonna like it. Okay, I have to check this out. You guys are probably going to guess which one I'm doing. So I'm also going to need some of this for the waistband, but I'm not cutting the waistband right now. <laughs> Here we go. Can you guess? I can see some of your comments. You guys are kind of mixed on that one. Do you want the white at the bottom of the hem or the black trim? That is the question of the moment. Of course, unless you're watching the replay. <laughs> but I still go back and read your comments. So I gave myself an extra inch here just because this fabric looks like it frays a lot, which of course it is. It's, it's a tweed. Of course it's going to fray. Now, when you cut this, you always cut one layer when you have a tweed like this. Because you know what could happen is if you fold it over, if it skews just a little bit, you'll end up not cutting where you want it to. This would be kind of a fun trim to incorporate in there. Oh, I like that. Okay, what did you say? Am I hemming it here or here? I'll come over and tell you which one I'm doing. And I'll tell you why. Because there is a reason. And anyone who's ever made a tweed skirt will probably think about this and go, oh. All right, so it looks like you guys are 50-50. I see a lot of black at the bottom, black. Okay, this is really funny. Oh, Pam got it right. I was going to say, almost everybody put black. Oh, Charlene said white. Lorraine said white. So it is. I'm putting white at the bottom. And the reason being is because... <laughs> uh, now, don't count, don't count your chickens yet, Mary. I haven't hemmed it yet. <laughs> okay. So the reason I put white at the bottom is that black line is the part that's kind of itchy on your skin, number one. So I don't really want it hitting my kneecaps. And two, it's not really itchy. It's just a little like kind of a fuzzy, I don't know what you'd call it, a different type of feeling than the rest of the fabric. So if you use the white, it's a little more forgiving if you press in just the wrong way, which of course I'm not going to do. But your eye won't go right there to that line. So if you're using a plaid and you have really distinct lines, Put the softer lines at your hem. 
Now for my sleeve, I can try to do that, which I probably will do that, but it's, it's more so for your skirt and your jacket. And then when it comes to the jacket, you hope that your skirt and your jacket will be very close to each other when you hem it. That gets a little tricky, but I will again use the white at the bottom because I'm going to be adding some embroidery, right? Now, depending on what my embroidery looks like or what I come up with, I'll lay it on the fabric and then determine for my jacket. But for the skirt, I'm not adding any embroidery. I might add a few pockets or something, but so it, it's the white and that's why. So it's not like so stark that you're staring at it. Make sense? Yeah. Now you don't have to, you, you guys can do anything you want to, but that's why I chose it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Our hour's almost up. It's way too much fun with you all. All right. So let me lay out my skirt and I'll show you how I'm going to cut this. And we'll save the lining till next time, just because I know I have a white and black florally, florally, is that your word for the day? <laughs> I don't even think that that's proper English, but florally, no, not floral. That's not the word I was looking for, but like a flowery, something like that. All right, so let me put this down. First off, when it comes to these tweeds, it's really difficult sometimes to see which side's the right side and the wrong side. And that would make it no different here. Goodness gracious. Wow, let me see this. Usually the selvage will give it away. And also if one side has more fuzzies than the other. Oh yeah. So this is the wrong side. I'm just gonna double check. Boy, you could really do this either or. I mean, it is, do you see a difference here? Help me out if you do, because I don't see it. But the important thing is, actually, I think I'm wrong. I think this is the right side, the top one. And this is the wrong side. Well, we could sit here all day and stare at this. All right, so this is the right side. I'm just gonna double check that there aren't any other signs for me to, nope, that's the right side. Okay, so I cut one layer at a time. Now you're gonna laugh. Yes, I do have my muslin here, but I made changes to it and I didn't change it on the pattern. So. You're gonna see me do something that you're gonna think, wait a minute, that doesn't even match. So first off, I want a two inch hem and I want the white to be at the bottom. So this skirt, oh, but you know what? We didn't measure to make sure if I'd added the hem allowance or not. Hmm. All right, back to the drawing board. So before next week, I'm going to sew my muslin again. I'll have to make a new one because I accidentally cut this one with the rotary cutter. So I can make sure my hem is exactly where I want it. So this one was for the Ponty knit skirts. I'm going to make another muslin for this fabric. And the most important thing is that you press up the hem and you like where that goes because that pressed hem edge is going to go right at the bottom of this white. All right, so if you want to sew along with me for the next few weeks, I just gave you your marching orders. And if you don't want to sew along, you just want to hang out with us, that's fine too. <laughs> so you need to find a tweed fabric. It could be any tweed, something that's comfortable, fashionable, and then try to find a lining. If you're going to quilt the lining, a silk lining is better. I don't ever quilt on a polyester. It's like, why go through all that work? So. Try to find a silk. Silk Charmeuse is the best. China Silk's my next favorite. Suede Silk is in there as well. So all three of those are good. Any questions? All right, so I'm going to work on my skirt muslin, which really takes like literally 10 minutes. I'm gonna cut that one out. I will baste it together. I use, you know what I use for that, the PQ 1500, super fast. Did you see the new PQ 1600? 
that's coming out in the fall. Yeah. It looks just like the other one, just a little prettier, has more colors. But um, a new and improved tension dial. There's something else new on it, too. I can't think off the top of my head. But anyways, I use that to sew my muslins together because it's really fast. Amanda says the white looks brighter on one side over the other. All right, I'm going to take it outside to double check. But I think looking at the salvage, I picked the right one, but I'm not sure. Oh, good, Betty. That's good to know. Oh, black tights for winter would look really good with that. You guys have a good eye. I have to go back and watch the show. <laughs> oh, yes. Vogue has some really nice tweeds. Very nice. All right. Any questions for those of you that want to sew along for the next few weeks? Any questions at all? You might want to go back into that couture jacket class if you think that you're going to make a matching jacket, too, because that is where I'm going next. Oh, good, Peggy. So, by the way, um, I have quite a few shows coming up on Brother as well. So, if you like hanging out with me during the day, tomorrow I will be on Brother's live show at noon. And I'm going to show how I made that crochet. Did you see the crocheted designs that they have? Yeah, it's really pretty. So, I'm going to show techniques for that. And then next week, I'm starting a sew along. Would you like to see a little teaser? Just a little teaser for it? Yeah, yeah, Michaela, I'm making the jacket too. Okay, here's the teaser for you. I'm finishing it today for the photos. Here's part of it. It's really not this big. It's about this big. See what I have on there? Fish. Of course, you don't have to have fish like my straps. Those are really fun. And there's going to be some embroidery and there's going to be some more trim and the bag stays hot or cold. Yeah. It's going to be a great grocery bag for you. I can't tell you how many times I run, I'll be running to the boat or running errands and I'll grab some groceries, but I don't have time to go right home. So this is going to be my new grocery bag. You're going to follow along. It's a four-week sew along, so stay tuned for next week. That starts, I think, on Thursday, if I'm going off the top of my head. <laughs> oh, thanks, Shirley. <laughs> well, I really don't have any place to go either, but I might have to tell Winnie has to take me uh, on a date. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I leave it in the car. It's going to have a zipper on the top. You know where I got this idea from. How many of you did I see in Houston last year? And it was hot when we went there for the Quilt Fest, right? But I always run to the grocery store in Houston because I'm there so long. And sometimes I like to just have some fruit for breakfast or something light and um, some bottled water, stuff like that. And they had these great zippered bags. They were like, I don't know, maybe 10 bucks or something. And I thought, this is perfect to carry my food back. Where has this been all my life? And then Peg, I don't know if Peg's on here today. Um, by the way, I've been thinking about you, Peg. Hope everything's well. Um, she gave me a bag when she brought some gifts here. And that was the same bag, except hers had a really cool pheasant thing on it. So anyways, that's where the idea came from. I thought we would make it uh, custom. And the inside isn't silver. It's quilted. So there's going to be quilting. There's going to be embroidery. There's going to be a lot of fun stuff. This is something that no matter who's sewing or you're sewing with your kids, this is going to be a really fun project. So something fun, and then we've got something classy. Lots of sew-alongs going on, right? <laughs> Thanks. Is it cooling down there? Yeah. Uh, no, Anne, it's going to be free, totally free. It'll be on the Brother page starting on uh, next Thursday. And there will be a newsletter to sign, like, where you can add it to the newsletter. You know, I only send a newsletter out once a month. <laughs> so once that goes out this week for the month of September, it'll give all the details. So if you need to sign up for my newsletter, be sure to do it before Friday. And that's over at AngelaWolf.com. And uh, let's see what else. Somebody else asked me a couple questions. I'll do a few Q&As real quick. And then I'll cover some more tomorrow on the Brother Show. Somebody asked me about the uh, Stellaire Masterclass. 
that you have the Stellaire One and you want the Masterclass. You can purchase that from your dealer. So um, I don't know what they're charging for it, but just call them because you can still get that. And if you buy the Stellaire Two, it's just like the Luminaire Three, where you register it on Brother's website. They will send you an email with a link and an access code to make the class for free. So yeah. Uh, yeah, Lorraine, there's going to be a supply list and everything. That's what starts next Thursday. <laughs> hey, Patty, don't get too carried away. I'm doing some quilting on the bag and quilting on the skirt. I think that that's about as far as I go. <laughs> you remember that fiasco from a couple years ago? Hmm. I still have that. I, I think I threw it away finally. Remember the skirt I was trying to do, the denim? Yeah, it wasn't. It just wasn't turning out very good. Oh, gosh, Helen, that's hot. <laughs> Um, is that blue blouse on Fashion Sewing Club? Yeah. So I wore this to Houston, remember? And and I showed this, how I designed it in the Fashion Sewing Club. Do you all remember when I did that? I think it was right when I got back from Houston. So I want to say maybe last week. So not the Zoom from yesterday, which that's in the website now, uh, the week before. So it would have been episode 1031, I think. And I showed you how I made that. It was... We did skirts, and then I did this at the end. Also, by the way, Fashion Sewing Club, uh, one quick thing. Did you see yesterday's Zoom? I know a lot of you watched the replays. You have to go on there. There were such cute things. We had little baby clothes. Oh, my gosh, that jacket was to die for. And then you, Lisa brought in some Chloe trenches I wasn't expecting that I was drooling over. If I saw those in a boutique, I would have bought every single one of them. So you have to go back and watch our Zoom Fashion Sewing Club. We always have our monthly sew and tell what you've been working on. Well, you guys will be very impressed about that. Okay. And everybody's saying it was the one before the Zoom in the Fashion Sewing Club. You have been away a while. We've missed you. Off topic. Did you cut the neck bigger for the blue shirt? Hey, Patty. Uh, no, that's my uh, Rouge T. Rouge T pattern hack. Debbie, it's episode 1031, I believe. Here, I'll look it up real quick. 2.30. Time's up. Um, it would have been episode, yeah, 1031, 1031. So go in the Fashion Sewing Club, scroll down to 1031. We did skirts at the beginning. I showed all the skirts I wore for Austin, gave you tips for that, and then showed how to make this collar. You're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, that's what you said, Shirley. That's too bad. But that's the good thing for the replay. All right, everyone. I got to run. Our hour is up. So I have to know, because I can see the likes right away. Are you going to sew along with the skirt? Give me the thumbs up. Are you going to sew along with the bag starting next week? Give me two thumbs up. And then I can know which one, or if you're doing both, then just make three. And then I can watch and see how many people are actually going to make the skirt. You don't have to make a matching jacket, you know. You could just have a beautiful tweed skirt that you can wear with a blouse or a t-shirt. I've seen gorgeous tweed skirts with a beautiful t-shirt. And that one fabric I showed you, that knit with the kind of florally, that would be a really cute t-shirt to throw in on top of that skirt by itself with no jacket. Yeah, I think so. Oh, I'm seeing, I got, I got two thumbs up. Oh, you guys are getting very creative. I'm waiting to see all the like buttons, but you guys have the thumbs right there in the comments. <laughs> Bag and skirt. <laughs> Bags for sure. So I'll tell you what. Um, if Well, the Fashion Sewing Club, you've already been fitting your skirts. If anybody has issues fitting your skirts, you might want to join for one month because you can go back and watch all five of those episodes. I showed you how to drape your own skirt. Um, you could also use the Kate skirt or the other skirt I showed you and go from there. But skirts are easy. They are. Anne says, maybe the skirt. Okay, that sounds good. Sweater with the tweet. Oh, Don, that's a great idea. Great idea. All right, everyone, have a great day. I'm out of here. And all of my friends, all the Wolf Pack that are in the line of the storms, please be safe. And we'll be watching for you. If, if your area gets hit, be sure to leave a comment in our Facebook group so we know you're good. And because um, we're always...
thinking about you and giving, um, throwing our prayers up for you. So exactly, Amanda, you got the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Here you go. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> All right, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a great day. And those that want to watch Brother tomorrow on the new Stellaire with the new crochet designs, I'll see you at noon Eastern. Otherwise, see you next week. Oh, yeah. It's Labor Day weekend, too. Have a wonderful weekend, guys. All right. Bye.